Hi, I'm Casey Watkins, and this is an audio abstract for our publication titled Determination of Vertical Jump as a Measure of Neuromuscular Readiness and Fatigue, as published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research. This research project was conducted at California State University of Fullerton in collaboration with Canadian Sport Institute Pacific in Whistler, British Columbia. The purpose of this article was to determine the sensitivity of vertical jump as a measure of readiness and fatigue on a daily sessional basis. The ability to assess neuromuscular fatigue before the workout can help coaches monitor each athlete's physiological state, check for accumulated fatigue from previous workouts, and quantify individual training load in a team environment. This allows coaches to proactively change volume specific to each athlete in order to maximize physiological adaptations throughout the year and prevent overtraining. Previous studies have investigated the use of RPE, heart rate variability, questionnaires, and other bloodborne markers to monitor fatigue post-exercise but these methods are generally subjective, costly, and are difficult to administer. Very few studies have investigated proactively quantifying fatigue to measure athlete readiness and monitor loads accordingly. Vertical jump is a quick and easy exercise to administer daily and has previously been used to monitor both immediate and chronic neuromuscular fatigue. For this research project, 10 males and 7 females volunteered to participate. All subjects had been consistently resistant trained for at least three years with experience in weightlifting movements, squats, and deadlifts. Participants went through a familiarization and baseline testing one week prior to testing. They completed a brief assessment mood questionnaire and max vertical jump assessment. Standing straight up on the force plate with hands on their hips, participants descended to a self-selected depth before jumping as high as they could. They were given two attempts, but allowed to continue if they kept jumping higher. Then subjects perform two to three sets of each exercise to determine their training weight for the subsequent training sessions with three minutes rest between all sets. Due to the increased neurological demand, a five repetition maximum test was used for hand clean and a six repetition max test was used for each subsequent exercise, push press, back squat, Romanian deadlift, and leg press. One repetition max estimations were then calculated and training weight was approximately 85% for their hand clean and push press exercises, and 80% of their one repetition max for back squat, remaining deadlift, and leg press. Workouts one and two were performed in succession at the same time of day, 48 hours apart with no outside workouts or recovery methods used between sessions. Participants came in, filled out the brief assessment mood questionnaire and vertical jump assessment identical to day one. The training program was designed to be a fatiguing whole body workout focusing on hip, knee, and ankle joints. Participants performed four sets of five repetitions for hand clean exercise, followed by four sets of six repetitions of push press, both at 85% of their estimated one repetition max, with two minutes rest between all sets. Both hand clean and push press exercises were performed at a constant volume to ensure a sufficient fatigue level was achieved. Back squat, Romanian deadlift, and leg press were performed in succession four sets to failure with one minute rest between all sets and two minutes rest between exercises. Failure was defined as the inability of the lifter to physically perform another repetition. Lifters were instructed to con continue performing repetitions descending each time until they could not lift the weight back to starting position and were forced to lower the weight down to safety bars. Researchers then returned weight to starting position while lifters took a seated rest. Back squat, remaining deadlift, leg press, and total volumes were used for analysis and compared to vertical jump height and peak power. As you can see in Table 1, we found back squat, leg press, and total volume were significantly lower workout 2 as compared to workout 1. However, there was no difference in Romanian deadlift volume between workouts. The major findings for this research article were vertical jump height decreased post-workout and remained 8% less than baseline 48 hours later at the beginning of the second workout reflecting the accumulated neuromuscular fatigue. As expected, vertical jump height declined even more following the second exercise bout. This research project also found both vertical jump height and peak power decrement were significantly correlated to back squat volume decrement, but not any other exercise. There was an approximate 2.5 centimeter decrement in vertical jump height associated with an approximate 5.5 repetition decrement in back squat volume. Vertical jump peak power also showed similar trends. This is likely due to the fact that vertical jump and back squat share similar movement patterns, both requiring whole body stabilization and triple extension. 
While hand clean also shares similar properties, due to exercise characteristics and participant safety, it was kept to a constant volume and thus not used for analysis. Practically speaking, strength and conditioning coaches can use a pre-exercise vertical jump height assessment as a tool to measure readiness for back squat training following high volume fatiguing resistance training bouts that include triple extension. Vertical jump height can be measured with a meter stick and a wall for coaches that don't have expensive equipment available to them and gives coaches an easy practical way of monitoring readiness to back squat. Other squat variations may also demonstrate similar fatigue sensitivity when proactively monitored by vertical jump, consider the shared kinematic principles. Further research should attempt to recruit more subjects to create a regression analysis as well as investigate different exercises, exercise orders, volumes, and intensities to fully understand the scope of vertical jump to measure neuromuscular fatigue and readiness. The large decrement in back squat volume may have contributed to the Romanian deadlift volume maintenance. However, it is outside the scope of this research project to say whether different exercise orders, volumes, or intensities would reflect neuromuscular fatigue using a pre-vertical jump assessment. This research project can be found in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research. Research gate profiles for myself, Casey Watkins, and all included authors, as well as on Instagram for the Center for Sport Performance at CSP Fullerton. Thank you for listening to this audio abstract. I hope you enjoyed it.